I did a video um, recently showing this little um, device here, and it's a plug-in um, circuit board that goes straight into a USB power supply and it lights up. And the reason I made that, apart from testing um, an ultraviolet exposure unit, was because I had placed an order for some of these from China and they hadn't arrived yet. They actually took quite a time to arrive, which is quite annoying, but I've got a selection of these. And what they are, are the little USB lights. And uh, they basically shove in to a USB power supply and emit huge quantities of light. Let's uh, do a wee quick power test on this and see how much current they're taking. So these ones are... I'll turn that over, actually. Um, these ones are drawing 110 milliamps. Now, you'll notice that I turned that over and it still remained lit. And this explains why it had some components in the listing that I couldn't actually 100% work out what their function was. There's two little devices here that turn out to be diodes. And the reason for that is that there, you can plug it in either way around and when you plug it into the USB port, uh, there's a metal housing, and technically speaking, it's shorting these contacts in the back out. Now, the two data ones in the middle um, aren't too critical because um, they're not connected to anything. And the negative isn't critical because it's not connected. Well, I mean, it's connected to the circuitry, but it's also connected to the shell in here, so it doesn't matter if it shorts against it. But what is critical is a positive, and the two diodes are to isolate the positives from each other um, so that when you put it in it doesn't short out. And I've got a wee sketch I did of this. So there's the front um, USB connection with the two middle data pins not connected and here's the back one. The two negative connections are connected together but the two positives go through the diode and that is just as I say so that if you put it in and the other side short against the metal uh, housing of the USB connector it doesn't short out because the diode blocks it. Beyond that, it's got the two diodes feed to a common positive rail, which then feeds through three resistors, three tiny little resistors here, little surface mount resistors, and then the LEDs. Now, I've shown the LEDs as a single LED, but inside these chips, there are actually two LEDs in parallel, which is quite unusual. There's a distinctive dot of light at each end. I don't know if it will show up in the uh, camera or not. It'll probably just swamp it out, but um, yes, quite a, a swath of light. So, it's quite a neat little thing. But it doesn't stop there. They also do this version, which has a light sensor in the back, and a little potentiometer, tiny potentiometer, a switching transistor, and a buffering transistor. And, as you've probably guessed already, when you plug it in, if you shield it from light, and I may have going to have to really try and shield it to get it to light. Oh, almost, almost, almost. No, it's really, it just starts glowing. Um, it, it, when it's dark, it gradually gets progressively brighter. And that's it at its most sensitive setting. Oh, there we, we had some there. Yep, so um, it uh, basically comes on when it gets dark. And then there's this one, which is really quite uh, smart. It's got six LEDs, all wired in parallel, with a single transistor driving them, and a little chip. Not sure what the chip is, there are no markings on it, and it doesn't have the standard pinout of a PIC-12. So I'm um, not sure what this is. Uh, but, and I'll turn this upside down so it's not too bright. If you plug it in, it doesn't light up. But if you touch the back of it, it gradually ramps up from off to full brightness. And if you touch the back again, it dims out again. So it's basically got a little microcontroller I mean, it's the sort of thing a PIC-12 could do, but I'm not 100% sure what it actually is. Because the, the little chip is also doing the sensing. So I'm not 100% sure if that's a dedicated chip or not. But anyway, I digress as I, as I drink my Diet Pepsi with absinthe in it. Um, and now, when I first made this, the standard thickness of the printed circuit board material is 1.6 millimetres. And I had to pack that up with tape. Now, I've got digital calipers here. Um, and starting off at the 1.6 millimetres. Oop, it slips out. So that's 1.59, 1.6. Um, I had to pack it up to 
2.22 millimetres, which is what it was in the end. And that equates to 0 0.087 inches. So just under a tenth of an inch. And that's the point that it was still wobbly in the um, connector, but it went in quite easily, but it was quite loose-ish. But I didn't want to make it too thick in case I ended up knackering the connector. But it turns out that these, um, if I put it back to the inch setting, these are pretty much a tenth of an inch thick. And that equates to about 2.5 millimetres, just over 2.5. I Typically it would be 2.54 millimetres, but um, it's just not going to be quite there. The tolerance is... Um, oh, hold on. Let's try different ones and see if there's much variation. Well, they're more or less all the same. So give or take the tolerance, they're just, just under a tenth of an inch thick. And the width-wise, um, they're just, again, under half an inch wide. Which uh, in the metric setting would be 12 millimetres wide. So, yeah, interesting. But thicker than I was expecting, I have to say, when you push them in to the um, connector, I, I actually thought it was just a wee bit too tight. It felt really snug. But I guess um, that must probably be compliant with the specification, or maybe it's just because 2.5 was the millimetres was the uh, closest they could uh, get to the correct size. But I'm not sure what the USB standard is. I didn't actually check it. But it's quite a snug fit. And I guess that's what it's supposed to be. But they're quite neat, aren't they? They're quite a clever little device.